the Adam Messer Show, and I'm your host, Adam Messer. And today I'm here with my special guest. His name is Kiwan Drayton. Hey, Kiwan, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you doing today, Adam? Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you, man. Um, I know y'all have been doing big things with the Savannah Underground, and we're going to be talking about that today, and uh, also about like your uh, film career and your directing career and all that. So I'm pretty excited about that. So. Yes, sir. Um, hey, Sebastian, you mind uh, playing a little? This is Sebastian Messer, everybody. Uh, his band is called Krieger, and he is live with us in the studio, and he plays every week with us. Thank you, Bass. That sounded really good. How was your uh, How was your gig the other day? It was pretty good. Uh, a lot of people from Savannah came out to see us out in Hinesville. Mm, you got a gig this week too, right? Yeah, we're gonna be playing at the front porch at six o'clock in Pooler. Front porch in Pooler. Uh, that's the one on eighty. Mm. Yeah, right there by the um, right, right across the from the city hall. City hall, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. What time are you playing then? At six o'clock. Six. Awesome. Who's in your band again? Uh, it's gonna be me, Noah Borba. Ivan Acha, and then it's Aiden Wallen. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, congratulations. That's great. So, yeah, uh, Kiwan, my son plays. Uh, he's been playing with me. Oh, gosh, this is the third year we're doing the radio station, right? Mm-hmm. Like, going on three years. And uh, you've been playing since what? Uh, yesterday was six years. Six years yesterday. Wow. That's crazy. So yeah, He's pretty good. I heard him last time when we were in there. He was playing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, that was such a coincidence, too, because I, I had no idea y'all were coming in the studio that day. Yeah. So we, you and I had set this up a while back, and then I was like, oh, look at that. Nice little surprise. We got the meet in person first. All right. So, hey, man, would you mind giving everybody uh, kind of like a little introduction about yourself? Yes. Yeah, so uh, pretty much Kiwan Drayton, uh, born and raised right here in Savannah, Georgia, graduated from uh, Florida State University, and I run... Uh, Red Eye Film Productions here in Savannah, along with my brother JT Timmons. And, you know, we've been at it since like 2009. Mm, we started wow. this when we were, started this when we were in um, high school. Just, you know, JT was, you know, he had a passion for filmmaking and cameras and I had a passion for, uh, you know, making money and just straight up hustling and developing my business career. Mm-hmm. And we kind of meshed our, both of our abilities and passions together and we, just decided to build this company and we've been doing it that way ever since like i said 2009 so everything we do now you know that's kind of our roots that's really good and you all started the uh, savannah underground right yeah so we recently started the savannah underground we've been planning this uh ever since like the middle of last year uh, we kind of thought of the idea we were trying to think of different things that um different things we can bring to the city of Savannah that it hasn't seen before. Um, you know, just living here, we're kind of used to, you know, the, the trolley tours. We're used to the history. We're used to, you know, the haunts and horrors of the city and things like that. So um, we as entertainers and filmmakers and thespians, we are always trying to develop new and innovative ways to um, bring a new sense of entertainment to the city. And we are just kind of brainstorming, trying to think of different ways we can do that. And um, we started looking into um theater and also uh ways to make uh to turn theatrical experiences into you know a new thing that people had never experienced before and we also wanted to you know tap into the history and you know the haunts and horrors in savannah and that's kind of how we developed the idea of a uh, you know an interactive immersive experience for uh for locals and tourists to enjoy alike so that's where the savannah underground was born and you know right now we're in our very early stages of developing you know this product and um it's been it's been taken very well by you know many locals and also a, a great bit of tourists and we have a pretty solid foundation right now and you know from all the information we receive in in such in such an early stage it definitely lets us know that you know the market is validated and we have a lot of room to work with and a lot and a, and a long way to grow mm-hmm. here yeah 
Yeah, that's a. I think that's a really good thing. I, I know we, um, <clears throat> everybody, we did an article. Um, I interviewed Kiwan for the Connect Savannah. It was out like what the week before last, I think it was, or it might have been last week. Yeah, uh, I think close, almost two weeks ago. Almost. Yeah, yeah, and um, so yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, I uh, I like your approach um, with what y'all are doing, and I think it's neat because it's it's more than just. Um, it's more than just a haunted attraction. It's a like a inter- immersive theatrical production thing that you're doing, and I, I feel like that's so cool because there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of um, haunts in Savannah um, and around Savannah. Um, there's a lot of like stuff, you, especially like around Halloween. Um, there's yeah. you know a lot of that, and there's also a lot of haunted ghost tours and that kind of thing. Uh, my buddy Ryan Dunn. He runs the after uh, afterlife tours. Uh, him and his uh, wife uh, Kim Dunn, they own afterlife tours here in Savannah. So they do like the haunted tour um, and take people around. So I think that's really cool. Um, you know that that kind of thing here in Savannah, especially people come here to Savannah for that. Um, I was actually, believe it or not, <laughs> Ryan. Um, I was in this show called America's Most terrifying places i think mm-hmm. i think that was the name of it um anyway it was on the the uh, travel channel and i actually played a um oh my gosh what is that guy's name <laughs> i played like four different characters i'm trying to think of the one guy's name but oh man i cannot yeah, you were featured in one of those shows i, I was the it? i was the guy i was like the main ghost <laughs> i just can't oh, I, wow. i'm having an old timers moment man i'm like 44 I, i'm not old but <laughs> I can't no, think of his good. name, but anyway, I play. You know when they do those reenactments or whatever, and they they oh, do yeah. the interviews and the, yeah. So I got to play uh, a character um, in that, and I I didn't know until after like when the show showed up. I was like, I didn't realize the the guy like the significance of that character, and I was like, what? Because I thought we were just you know we're all like acting and all you know nobody's no spoken lines, but it's all like you know uh, character acting and stuff like that. Yeah. And that was so much fun doing that. Um, I wouldn't want to do it all the time, but you know, my hats off to people that they, they do like doing that, and then also like you know setting that up for people. So, no, it's very fun to get those experiences, man, because it gives you just a slight insight on you know the on the business and how it's all, how it all comes together. Like it's a very big difference between you know being there and acting in it, and then also you know just randomly seeing it on TV as well. Yeah, yeah, I I have not done a whole lot in film. I've worked I've done I've helped a, a couple of people. I had a buddy of mine who did his MFA at SCAD and when he was going mm-hmm. through I played I did uh, did the role of the grip and I was like a personal assistant and and then later on when I did photography, I got into doing photography, like set photography and that kind of stuff, but uh, not principal photography. Cool. And then I just this thing last year was just like they needed an extra, they needed a couple of extras on a certain day I was available and I was like, "Oh yeah." So, but that was, that was my one and only uh, TV appearance. So it was pretty cool. Hey, well, most people never get to say they got one. It was fun. I think yeah. uh, uh, when we were talking before, you, y'all had talked about, uh, or you were talking about maybe doing something like, um, you know, where people could go online and do something. Um, have you looked more into that too? Oh, well, yeah. So we're exploring a bunch of different options as far as, you know, maximizing uh, you know, VR, AR, all these different things that kind of, you know, incorporate itself with, you know, the Savannah Underground, things like that. So, you know, we're really trying to um, maximize our opportunities when it comes down to, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, and mm-hmm. also how we, how we can uh, make it happen, especially now with, you know, it being us being in the middle of a pandemic or the tail end of it all, kind of just trying to make it uh, the Savannah Underground accessible to you know people all mm-hmm. over especially tourists you know if they don't come to the show exactly maybe they can get a, an experience through you know ar or something like that so you know right now we're mainly focused on you know getting the show off the ground collecting as much research as much research as possible um just so that we can see how people are taking to this idea and then once once this is done once the month of march is over we'll have a, a much better idea of how you know what all we can tap into to you know uh, blow this thing up and where where are you doing the uh the show for this time um at the moment uh for the month of march the show is being ran at the clyde venue 
I'm located at 223 Martin Luther King Boulevard um, here in Savannah. Nice. So, what end of, uh, what kind of, MLK is that on? Like, uh, is it like closer to 16 or? Because, uh, like, no, two, actually, 200 block, that's, like. Yeah, it's right in between. It's right in between Ogre Park and uh, Liberty. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. It's right in that SCAD, SCAD district area. Yeah, um, I I was just at one of the uh, local stores, and they were saying that uh, SCAD is on uh, spring break this week, and they should be back, like, next week. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true, because a lot of our uh, actors and stuff are, you know, on spring break and stuff. Yeah. How was it this weekend? <laughs> um, This weekend, we actually only ran uh, Thursday and Friday, mm, okay. um, just because the the uh, venue, the Clyde venue, had a, had a, um, a wedding on Saturday, so oh, we okay. didn't run Saturday, but we did run Thursday and Friday. Um, Thursday was a little slow. We had about 10 people, 10 to 12 people in each show. Um and but Saturday, I mean Friday picked up a good bit. You know, uh, we saw our numbers go up from ten to twelve people per show to about you know between fourteen and twenty five people per show. Oh, so, I think uh, that's great, man. Yeah, no, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Which you know shows that you know our market is you know more inclined to take on new experiences, uh, such as the Savannah Underground weekends as opposed to during the weekdays. Yeah, well, and I remember one of the things that we talked about was like y'all were emphasizing safety. Uh, you know, because we still are, you know, dealing with a pandemic. And of course. so, you know, that's, I think that's really good that, you know, you're trying to still be safe and, you know, make sure, you know, because I mean, it's hard to do something new, you know? And, you, yeah, I mean, especially uh, like if you're going through, uh, <laughs> you know, if you're going through a pandemic and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to launch something and do something. I, I started, uh, <laughs> it's so crazy, but I started Valhalla Books last year and, uh, I know a lot of people are like, oh, why, why start something new? Like, well, is there ever going to be a perfect time to do something? You yeah. know, if you, if you got the, uh, if you got the energy and you got the, you know, why not just go for it? You know? Exactly. Yeah, man. I mean, main thing is me, like, you know, especially if you have everything you need, you know, the team, you know, the artistic ability to, to you know, tell a story and work with the things that you have, man, you can make a lot of things happen. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the hardest part of it all. It's not, it's not actually doing it. It's just like you know, getting it, getting it all together, and the planning that goes into it beforehand, mm-hmm. and in the process of it. Though that's that's the hardest part. Yeah, because once those things are flowing smoothly, it's just a matter of everybody else doing what they have a passion to do. Right, right, and then the follow mm-hmm. through. Yeah, for exactly. sure. Uh, everybody, you're tuning in today to the Adam Messer Show here on WRUU LP Savannah, Georgia. 107.5 FM, WRU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. My special guest today is Kiwan Drayden. You know, Kiwan, uh, you're a lot like me where you do uh, multiple different things. Um, what do you, like, normally, like, when you introduce yourself, what do you do? You should tell people, like, you're a director, or what do you usually tell folks that, you know, what you do? Yeah, so basically in the film world, what you would – people would consider my position to be is what would they call an executive producer okay um i don't really like to call myself that just because it's, it's i don't really like you know flashy titles and stuff like that um with me i just handle most of the business for you know uh the red eye and this and underground so you know pretty much you know maintaining a, a nice connection with with my with the actors um with the director uh mm-hmm. which is jt and, you know, anybody who is contributing to making sure that, you know, we can actually have a full production and everything is flowing smoothly, you know, I'm the person that's tying all those different things together. I'm the person that's making the big decisions on, you know, what what um, what venues we use or, you know, how many shows we're going to run, all those different things. So, you know, I'm, I am, I contribute a lot artistically, um, just looking at it from a person who is like, audience member sometimes just because i find myself playing devil's advocate a lot you know a lot of people on our team are very big on you know crime thriller horror all those different things mm-hmm. to be honest i'm just i'm just a, i'm just a normal a normal person i'm not biased in regards to you know how things are how things are going i, I just like i like entertainment and it's, for me it's just I, I hit it off from a business mind um, but I do work very closely with, you know, like I said, our actors and our director and just making sure that everything is flowing so that we can make sure that we have a, a, a viable product overall. 
Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, did you what, what did you go to school for? You said you went to Florida State, right? Yes, sir. I went to Florida State for criminal justice and criminology with intentions of, you know, pursuing a career in in law. Oh, cool. Yeah. But um I've always had I've always I've always just loved entertainment. I've always loved business. I am I am a writer as well. So, you know, I do all those different things, but my passion is, you know, is the, is the business of it is, uh, you know, because when you work in a city where there are so many different artists and things like that, you know, you, you see an opportunity to, you know, give the actors and the writers and, you know, the directors an opportunity for them to, you know, do what they love to do while you come in from the backside and just allow them to, you know, profit from what they do because a lot of people who are artists they're like you know they'll do what they want and you know it's, it's such a passion for them that they won't take the time to figure out how they can actually actually be getting paid or how they should actually try to benefit from their true passions and that's usually why i come in and just help a lot of these people tie those things together and figure out how can we do something or create something that will allow you to do what you love and make a living out of it yeah yeah that's true um that's one of the things I tell people, you know, get your money when you're when you're doing a job. Um, it's so funny, too, because uh, <laughs> there are a lot of folks out there who take advantage of that. Um, they'll say, oh, well, uh, you know, can, you, you, you like to draw or you like to do this. Can you make, you know, this for me or whatever? I'm like, you know, and over the years uh, doing stuff or whatever, it's, it's just funny because I've met a lot of artists especially new people like when they first get into stuff they're like oh i need to get the experience or i need to get this or that it's like yeah you do you know but at the same time if if you were if the person liked you enough to have you do the job uh, then you were good enough to do the job right and you're also good enough to get paid Right. So a lot of folks, a lot of artists I know, they're like, oh, well, I, I'm this, I'm not that. I'm like, whatever. I'm like, get your money. Like if if they like the little logo that you drew and they're using it for their business and they're like, oh, you know, it's just exposure. I don't want to get exposure bucks. <laughs> I don't need exactly, exposure right. bucks. Pay me. Huh. <laughs> you know, You're absolutely right. And that's kind of that's kind of where where I am with it. You know, like I, I meet a lot of people with passion and, you know, we like. A lot of people on our team, you know, they, they have passion and mm -hmm. they depend on me to make sure that they are allowed to do what they want to do while not getting cheated or, you know, just that. And that's kind of the connection that I want to have with, you know, my team mm -hmm. and, you know, even with, uh, you know, the large group of actors and, you know, performers that we're using Savannah Underground. You know, everybody knows I want to make sure they're good. They know I'm going to make sure the business flows smoothly. And they know that I'm going to come to them and give them a true opinion of um, how the audience me how the audience members are responding to their performances and things like that. You know, because a lot of people don't have a lot of people don't have the, um, you know, how should I say it? When, when people are trying to when performers are doing things and, you know, audience members are, you know, criticizing or critiquing a specific performance or something like that. Not everyone knows how to give that information to the performers so mm -hmm. that they can use it to be better. And that's kind of how I am. I come in and I let them know this is what the audience members like and this is what they didn't like. How are we going to work on it? How are we going to fix it? How are we going to make it better? Yeah. I'll tell you something too, man. Um, along that same line is – how do I say this? Because you, you have a background where you, you've been directing and that kind of stuff. So you have, you have a good, good way to be able to foster that. Right. But <laughs> there are a lot of like Monday chair football, you know, quarterbacks. Yes. And they never, they, they've never acted a day in their life or the, but they know like, you know, they like, they know what they like and what they don't like. Right. And it's, it's kind of like when you write books, you know, or you, you write anything or you do anything, you know, if you get people, you get people that are going to give, you know, feedback. And then some people, especially, I don't know what it is about uh, social media or whatever, but people feel so entitled to just be like critique everything, you know, instead of just like going for the pleasure of enjoying it, you know, they, they critique and they're like, Oh, well, I, you know, I, I liked everything. Like, for example, I saw somebody that, um, they, they got a four star review on a book, right? Out of five stars on Amazon. It's like, you know, five, five, five stars or whatever. And the, the person that left the review 
left a good review of the book. They they enjoyed the book. They did everything, but they left a four out of five stars, right? And that the the author was like, well, why did they, you know, what what you know, kind of like why they were like, why didn't they just leave a five star, right? And I had a boss one time. It's so crazy, but I had a boss one time, and this guy was a jerk, a t total jerk. And this guy, he was like, you know, to get five stars or to get a perfect score, you've got to be like the Michael Jordan of whatever it is you're doing. Like you got to be the, you know, greatest of all time of what you're doing. Otherwise you're four stars. I'm like, man, you know, that's true. But if, if you got somebody who, if you got a, a performer, a person doing whatever, you know, and they have like a little off day, this one thing, like if you've got like you, you got a background and you, you know, you have, you have your business and you know it's one thing when you're giving constructive feedback and it's a totally different thing when somebody who they don't know anything about it is just piping off and saying hey exactly you know yeah no i know exactly what you mean and we experience that a lot um but like i said a lot of those people they come in with a fresh set of eyes and they don't have they have an appreciation they're looking at it from a very biased opinion because they're thinking of it from like Okay, you know, I'm coming. I've I've paid to come to this show, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and this is what this is what I got. I didn't get everything I received, but what they don't see is, you know, the style where okay, this is their this is their third or fourth performance. This is like you know they've been you know overworked from doing this you know nonstop every single day, and you know the good thing is some some artists and some people are very considerate of those things because uh, it's very when when a perfect a person is performing. Most of the time, if they've been, if they're well rehearsed and you know things like that, it's very, it's very hard to uh, pick up on the mistakes that they actually make. Right. Most actors don't like you know make super super bad mistakes while performing, just because it's almost like second nature to them sometimes. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, you're always going to get those types of people, and you know that's why I try to. I've learned. I've been learning a lot as well. You don't let actors hear. You know all of the criticism no, lot, because you know no. some people some people give them like give them feedback that they that they shouldn't even be receiving, but that does play a part into how they see themselves as actors or how they see themselves as you know overall performers. any kind of artist. Yeah, I exactly. mean, I mean, you know, especially like when it's live, mm-hmm. like like a play. I mean, like you're, what you're doing is essentially like a play. You know, you're putting on a performance live, and there are going to be miscues. They're going to be, you know, uh, we're human, mm-hmm. right? We're going to mess. Yep. We're going to mess of up course. things. But yeah. you know, uh, for me, I just always, I just always thought it was funny. You know, the peanut gallery, you know, throwing, throwing tomatoes. I and mean, it's like you couldn't do what they're doing on stage. What do you, you know? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, everybody's entitled to their opinion. They're entitled to their opinion. But I kind of, I, <laughs> I'm going to sound yeah. funny, but I kind of uh, compare. Uh, bad reviewers like that to the folks that'll eat the whole steak dinner and then complain that the water wasn't cold enough. They're like, I'm like, you know, I want a refund. I'm like, yeah. You ate the whole steak. If it was a bad meal, you you didn't have to eat the whole steak. You know? Yeah, you can't you can't get around those people, man. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, you can no matter if your performance is spot on or you know if you mess up just a little bit, you aren't you aren't ever going to be able to avoid. Those, those yeah, people those toxic are there. Uh, people are like that are toxic. That, and that's the only reason why I'm even talking about that with the, the art world or whatever. Because you uh-huh. know, any kind of performance, any kind of entertainment that you put out there, any, there's always going to be some little hater. You know, there's always going to be somebody who's like, oh, you know, I don't like this or I don't like that. Yeah, I like to focus on the folks that they do like it. You know, like of turning the people that you know are turning to me and and the people that are yeah. liking my stuff because I know my stuff's not going to be for everybody. You know, just like yeah. I, I know horror is not for everybody. Like I write horror. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know that it's not for everybody. Um, exactly. You know. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't we don't make it for everybody. You know, no, we no, make no. it because it's a it's what we have the ability to do. You know, if we had the ability to create something that was, you know, strictly drama and we had the team and people who had that passion, then we do it. But I always right, thought, so dude, that's so crazy that you just said drama. I just always thought it'd be so funny if somebody did a horror soap opera. Right. You know, like instead of Days of Our Lives, it'd be like Days of, mm-hmm. of Our Dead. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got you. A lot of people on our team will will be up for that challenge, man. I'm telling you, we, 
you we can our team will throw some horror into just about anything yeah yeah i mean like i always just thought it would be so funny because like those soap operas you know like I love Walking Dead. I don't. I haven't watched it in a while, but I love. I you know. It was, I think it was great. You know, uh, and like to me, The Walking Dead was you know like a soap opera. You know, because it's you know just like the General Hospital or Days of Our Lives when I was a kid. You know, my mom used to watch it all the time, and uh, you see the same. You see the same things over and over again. You know, drama and yeah. that kind of stuff. And it's like, oh, you know, who's the new bad guy this week? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So with the uh, with the Savannah Underground, I know y- y'all. The the thing is that you try to improve the experience. So like if somebody's coming through, you know, this time that the next time is is not exactly the same that you know they saw the first time, right? Uh, it's not. It's it's around the one the show that we're running in March is always is is how it is right now. It's what we've been rehearsing for the past few months. Yeah, but. Um, you know, we the good thing is that pe- people get different experiences because they sometimes get different actors. Like we have the same actors for certain roles, and we have different actors for other roles. And so, um, oh, the overall stories are the same, but the experiences can be completely different. And there's not one person that comes in there that has the same exact experience as another audience member, just because they all are viewing the story from different ways. Yeah, and that's yeah. and that's that's what we want. We want people to to take different things. We want people to you know, uh, enjoy the freedom of being able to experience it from, you know, different perspectives or different angles or being able to see it from the perspective of the person who, you know, who uh, committed the murder mm-hmm. or, you know, all, all these different things. And that's kind of what we what we want to do is, you know, we don't even though even though 30 people are experiencing the same show, they aren't exactly experiencing the same show because they're looking at it from different perspectives. Have you ever uh, have you ever watched your, like what's your favorite movie? Kiwan? Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Okay, have you ever watched that more than five times? Uh, I have watched that movie, uh, probably probably about fifty times. All right, yeah, I'm like that too. Uh, not with Shawshank Redemption. I've watched it several times, but you know, we all got to mm-hmm. get on with living, or we all got to get on of with dying, right? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. when you watch that movie, don't you feel like you take something new away from it? every single time and that's why i watch it so much yeah that's how i feel about like you know like with what your performance and the theatrical uh style that you're doing that that that's what i feel like they are you know with the audience connection because they're going to have you know the thrills and they're going to have like the you know the fascination but these are you know this like you said before it's like this stuff is based off of uh real people you mm-hmm. know his the like the darker side of history with with savannah and I think, you know, even like even if the people like not even necessarily horror uh, fans, but, you know, history buffs, you know, they might enjoy it, too. And like I like true crime stuff. I love true crime yes. stuff. Um, right. So I think that's one of the things with uh, with that kind of performance is that, you know, people can they can get uh, multiple different experiences. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, multiple angles from different characters or whatever. Yeah. And the thing is, is that like whenever us we can keep those same stories, the same stories that we're telling right now. Mm-hmm. We can keep, we can keep those same stories and just tell it from the, per, from a different perspective, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, different angles from the different, uh, characters within that story. And it still be a completely different story. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, no matter how, no matter how many times we tell the same story, you know, as long as we are focusing on, the the angle of different characters and telling it a different way it will still it can still be just as just as good or you know and that's the that's the beauty in into all of this is you know when you when you watch a movie you know you watch that unless they unless they make the movie differently or you know choose a completely different director or actors or you know or, or main character or whatever that movie is going to always be that movie with our show. We're, we can keep those same stories and switch it up as many times as we want, you know? Yeah. And that's what I love about it. Well, I think sometimes too, like you said, um, you're going to have actors who bring something new, a new element to that character. Right. Exactly. So you can have the same character with a different actor and they're going to bring something new to that character and the element of that, you know, the character. Um, yeah. And that's why I love watching it. Cause I'm not, I'm not an actor. 
I'm not, and I have a very, I have a very high respect for actors because they, the amount of work that they put in, and is you know people will, will never know how much time and effort they put in just outside of you know the schedule rehearsals and things like that. Mm-hmm. And they all, and if you're just like a person who's not an actor, and you know you're more on the business side of it, it's super impressive to be sitting at the table and listening to the questions that they're asking and the type of of pretty much how deep how deeply they go into becoming the person within the role that they are playing yeah i I love well go ahead sorry yeah and like i was saying like it just the psychology of it all you know some of these people literally have to become you know certain people or you know have to take on a certain set of emotions uh you know just before they they can fully get into character and i think a lot of people who want to be actors or who want to be performers they don't realize how taxing it can be to you know take on those emotions and and you know the responsibility that comes with you know Mm -hmm. being being a good actor Mm -hmm. uh i agree with you uh we've got to take a station break real quick kiwan and uh we'll be back in about two minutes okay yes it is that time again to support wruu through your vote in the connect savannah best of savannah poll it's easy. Go to Connect Savannah at www.connectsavannah.com and click on the Go Vote image. Read the instructions and then scroll down and click on the image labeled Media. Type in WRUU in both the Best Local Radio Station and Best Talk Radio Station categories and click the Vote button for each. Thank you for listening to and supporting WRUU in the Connect Savannah Best of Savannah poll. What does it mean when we say that WRUU is a community radio station? It doesn't just mean that we invite the community to create programming. And it doesn't just mean that we are a voice for the community. It also means that we are counting on the community to keep us going. And you are the community. Almost all of our modest budget comes from small annual or monthly donations from listeners like you. You get to enjoy our community-focused programming because many others have stepped forward to do their part. Now do your part by joining our community of listener donors. Go to wruu.org right now and make a one-time or monthly donation. And thank you for supporting Savannah's community radio station, 107.5 FM. This portion this of is a message from the Georgia State Savannah Department of Soundings programming is provided by listeners and by Brighter Day Natural Foods. Brighter Day Natural Foods has been serving Savannah's healthy food and supplement needs since 1978. It is located at the corner of Bull Street and Park Avenue. They have available online ordering and curbside delivery, and now a walk-up window for smoothies, juices, and sandwiches from the deli. They are open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 12 to 5.30 p.m. on Sunday. More information can be found at brighterdayfoods.com. All right, we are back, everybody, and this is the Adam Messer Show. I'm your host, Adam Messer, We're here with my special guest, Kiwan Drayton, and we were just talking about uh, the performance, like the amount of emotion that goes into an actor's performance. And I, I agree with you. Uh, my my friend Josh Vasquez and I, we started a small, uh, actually just like kind of like a horror uh, B-movie type production company called Dead Pixel Pictures. And um, he's, he's, you know, Josh and I, we're, we're really good friends. And he's a big uh, film, film guy. And um, we did two little productions this last year. And uh, working with the actors you know, both he and I were, you know, working together and, um, working with the actors and having them do, you know, like just, I'll give you an example. We had, um, we had one scene where the guy was, um, he was doing a great job, but it was just more of, a. I we needed him to be a little bit more assertive and, you know, not passive. Um, uh, and it was just like, Hey, you know, can you, do it this way can you be a little bit more assertive um not combative but a little more assertive we did another take and the guy nailed it you know it was perfect and i think that's one of the things where i mean we all have we all have a way of being able to pretend or act or you know use our imaginations yeah. or whatever but the folks that uh, they like to act you know and they're they're really good at it you know it's a lot of memorization it's also a lot of like you know 
tying into their emotions too. So I think it's yeah, amazing exactly. how they do that. Well, it's like, you know, like you, what you were talking about, how, you know, when you're asking, they were asking the actor to be more assertive, you know, all it takes is, you know, having a director who knows what notes to give and how to give those notes yeah. to those actors. Because, um, you know, some some actors, you know, they just need to uh, have somebody there who, un, who who knows their style, understands their personality and knows how to communicate different sets of information to them so that they can, you know, get, you know, get that feeling or get whatever it is out of that person that they're trying to get. It. That's one thing I've been learning from JT is um, JT takes the time to, you know, when he's getting ready to, um, you know, work with a specific actor or you know, a new person on the team, he does a great job getting to know that person. Kind of trying to find out, you know, what different characteristics of that person, uh, what type of characteristics they may have that allows them to bring that to whatever role that he's wanting them to play. Because right. that kind of plays a part into what notes he has to give or it even helps him, you know, kind of figure out how he can – you know, manipulate this character's role uh, in the film to, you know, make that person's acting job a lot more easy or just figuring out how to, how to communicate with that person overall. Because honestly, you know, working with a director and working with an actor is just a, is just a lot of communication. That's it. Because you have a director mm -hmm. that's trying to communicate. You have a writer who's trying to, who's, who has a story that they want told. You have an, a director who gives the, who gives the story life he have the actor who brings it to life. So it's just a matter of communicating from point A to point B to point C. And if you aren't communicating properly, then it will never turn out the right way. Yeah, I think uh, you hit it right on the money. I mean, like communication, in my opinion, you can resolve like 99% of problems oh, uh, of with course. communication. I mean, like some things you can't, but, you know, usually when it's that point, it, you know. And even – yeah, and that's even when things get escalated to the point where, you know, there might be some kind of, you know, disturbance or whatever, even after that, there's what communication, right? Exactly. So yeah. even, even if there's a, you know, like some kind of impetus that changes things, there has to be communication. Always. Exactly. Communication, passion, man, all of that, because there's been times when, you know, there's, you know, the director always has a idea of how he wants something mm -hmm. done. But then when the actor comes in, that actor may bring a completely different mindset or completely different note or anything to that character that the director might like and that may change his complete perspective mm -hmm. you know and those are all that's why you have to be very open-minded in this in this line of work because it's like you know a person can come in and you may have to work with that person a little bit or that person can come in and change their whole complete perspective of you know how something was how you perceive something should be that's one of the things I love about the arts too. Um, there's there's a lot of different levels, you know. I mean, I think people uh -huh. when they think of acting, they think of like oh Hollywood, right? You know, movies yeah. and movies. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of different levels of acting, you know, yes. and there's a lot of different levels of art. Um, it you don't have to be famous to do what you want to do, you know. Not at all. Uh, I think it's great because you know when I was saying earlier about getting paid. Uh, we were talking about that. Make sure, you, know, you said that you, that's what you know. You do with the executive producing. You make sure that you know the business side of things are handled and whatever. Um, there are a lot of community theater. There's a lot of community theater out there where people are volunteers. I'm not saying when I say get paid. I'm not saying don't do those things. I'm not saying you know don't put your art out there. Don't you know like I've donated a bunch of art. Like over not uh, not a ton ton, but I've donated a bunch yeah. of art over the years and you know th and things like that where I'll just share it with somebody or like somebody will ask me to help them with a project or something like that. I'm not saying that. I I'm just saying like you know there's a lot of different levels of of art. So you know if if for example commercial art. So for example you all are doing a commercial project. You're selling tickets. You know you're. You know, you're trying to, uh, you know, make a business with it or whatever. You should pay your actors, right? If it were a volunteer, like a community, you know, let's just say it's a church, for example. Like, you know, if a church play, you put a, a play on at a church. And the church has got a budget maybe for props and stuff like that, but they're not paying the actors. That's different, right? So mm -hmm. that's that's what I'm talking about for folks out there. So I don't want anybody to get it twisted or whatever, but I'm just saying, like, you know, uh, there's different levels of art. 
and I'm not saying you should like, you, you know, if you make, let's say you, you, you make a logo for a friend of yours, so you're a graphic designer, you make a logo for a friend of yours and you do it for $5 or normally you charge somebody $500. Mm-hmm. Obviously you're, you know, you're skillful enough to charge $500 for it, Yes, but you're doing it as a favor to somebody. And, you know, there, the $5 is just a, you know, kind of like a tributary payment. It's not yeah, even, exactly. it's just a, Hey, Kiwan, thank you. You know, let me buy your lunch type thing. Yeah, you have to, you just have to, like, a, what I noticed with a lot of artists is, you know, like, you know, the business just becoming overshadowed with passion. Right. And right. that's, that's, that can be a big mistake in, you know, in just, you know, the, in entertainment or anything in general, because, you know, you do these things just because you love doing it. And, you know, you missed a complete opportunity to be yeah. making a living out of it because people people are willing to pay you for your work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just a matter of are you able to capitalize on that? Mm-hmm. Because I notice a lot of people, you know, they give away so much just in an in an ideation session. And it's like you know, you, you you can't do that because the minute you start doing that, your time becomes money, your passion becomes mm-hmm. money. I know we don't do it for. Hey, can you, you know, can you hold for, up for a second? Can you please uh, break it down what that ideation is for people? So ideation uh, is pretty much you know you coming in you know for example somebody comes to you and say hey I'm I'm interested in your production company uh, helping me bring my short film to life. Yeah. And you know the moment you start contributing artistically, telling this person about different perspectives in which they should tell their story, or what kind of actors they should use, or all different things they should be considering in order to bring that thing to life, that's that's ideation. And ideation, in my eyes, is is money. Let me tell you. And, let me tell you something about that. So a lot of people recognize that as like a brainstorm session uh-huh. or a consulting. Um, mm-hmm. I have had folks. <laughs> have used me for that they're like oh yada 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 and then they will like basically steal my ideas exactly man and, and i'm like you know i thought you know i thought we were friends i thought just we were brainstorming yeah, yeah i thought we were just you know hanging out and whatever and or or <laughs> i've had people that they will ask me and i'll help them and then they'll use my idea and then they'll act like they were the ones that came up with it and give me no credit at all Happens, happens I'm more like, than you think. Right? Man, you know, yeah. and I, mm-hmm. that's why that's why I'm so adamant because I've had people take advantage of me in the past for like uh, photography. I had you know people use me for photography when I was doing photography. Um, it's just one of those things because like I try to look at you know I try to look at people as like oh this is altruistic and you know hey we're all artists or whatever and there's a lot of folks out there that they don't have the same kind of um, how do I say it. Uh, they don't have the same kind of uh, ideation, uh, creation. Uh, yeah, exactly. You they know, don't have the same perspective on it. Right. And, and you have to, you have to be brave enough or bold enough to draw that line there. Yeah. Like, you know, like you know, hey, like I'm just like I'm your friend. I'm willing to help you, but this is what my time is worth. And with some artists, it's even like you know, even if you do decide to do some work, you know, for free, for a church or for a nonprofit organization or anything of that sort. Being able to understand what is a, what you know business decisions are available to you in regards to working for free because you may be able you may do something free for a church and you know you can count that off as a donation you know and, yeah oh yeah you know, most 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 people don't look at those different options because they don't want to or they just don't know or it takes a lot more time to figure out how they can make that happen but you know in art it, you know art it takes time to make art. And, you know, it's different than just going to, you know, go wash a car and make a quick 20, 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, art, you have to write that. You have to paint that. You have to develop that story. You have to tell it. You have to find the actors. You have to cast them. And the moment you, the moment you aren't, you know, making sure that, you know, either your efforts are being, you know, attached to something bigger that has the potential to make you more money or to help you have a better career. You're just at that point, you're, you're wasting your time. Yeah, hold on for a second. We got to do the uh, station ID. Uh, okay. Everybody, today you are tuning in to, and if this is the first time, thank you very much for listening. Um, you're tuning in today to WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And that's that's one of the things, Kevin, I'm glad that you brought up uh, talking about the business side of things because 
And I mean, I, I've said this many times on the show, get your money, get paid. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm wearing a t-shirt right now that says the Savannah quill and it's, uh, it's like a retro eighties style shirt. It's got like that neon pink, um, laser, you know, look, this is the Savannah. And then the quill is like a, one of those chrome metallic looking, you know, it says quill like that. Right. Mm-hmm. I commissioned an artist to make this logo for me. Right. I paid the artist. Now they didn't charge me a lot. I was a friend of mine back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still paid them. I commissioned them to do it, uh, you know, for work for hire. Right. Yeah. I pay people for their time and their, their appreciation. Now for collaborating. Yeah. And for example, if I'm collaborating with somebody and yeah. you know, we're not paying each other per se, but we're collaborating. Right. It's important though. Exactly. And it's, it's a mutually beneficial agreement, right? Yeah. It's not where one person is, you know, doing 99% of the work and yeah. one other person is doing like, you know, oh, they just show up for an ideation to steal your ideas. <laughs> exactly, man. And one thing I've realized, you know, uh, during, you know, my time of being on the business side of things is that people in the business world are just, just everyday people who, you know, work, uh, you know, normal everyday jobs yeah. Yeah. and artists. We live in two completely different worlds. And, you know, uh, you know, no people on the business side or, you know, whatever, they don't realize they need artists until they need them. So when that business needs a logo, then they need to consult with an artist. We're, cons- um, we're, we're, we're consumed with more, um, art. I mean, like there is art everywhere you look from buildings to <laughs> architecture exactly. to the chairs to the clothes that you wear. I mean, exactly. a person created those things, right? Yes. And we're surrounded by art, you know, but people, mm-hmm. uh, they have this idea like, oh, well, anybody and everybody can do it. Well, okay, get somebody else exactly. to do it then. Yeah. <laughs> and usually, usually, usually that, you know, some people, you know, undermine or they not necessarily look down on, but they, they, they see it as more of a passion thing. Because right. when, you know, people are so used to working jobs that they don't like, or they're used to, you know, doing things that they don't like for money. When it comes down to artists, people see it as, oh, you like doing this, so why should I have to pay you so much money for it? Right. You uh, enjoy it. Consider... It's like a hobby for you. It's like, no, yeah. if, if I'm charging it's... for it, it's not necessarily a hobby. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't you don't realize, like, they aren't paying you for what you're going to do for them at that moment. Yeah. And they're paying for all the time that it took for you to learn those different things yeah. to get to this point where you are. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. So that's why I say if artists, if you don't lay it out clearly or, or, you know, take yourself, you know, serious enough to, you know, get your business outlined um, properly, you'll always end up getting. I remember one time, man, I put, I put, I've only, I put out a couple of books about poetry. Um, and I haven't done any of this last year, but I remember one time this guy was like, well, isn't 10, it was a, it's like 25 poems in a book, a little chapter poetry book. And the, the guy was like, isn't that a lot for uh, $10 for that? And I was like, $10 is nothing for the emotions that you'll feel after you read it. I was like, you know, you're not, you're not buying the book because you want to have this, you know, piece of paper in front of you. You're, you buy a book or you, you or you watch a movie or you go to a show like the Savannah underground because you want to experience that, you know, I mean, like it, it's different. It's like, you know, you, we, like, we all know we like certain foods. I mean, like, you know, there's a certain favorite food, you know, and we all know that there's always that knockoff or not knockoff necessarily, but there's always like the substitute. That's not quite that thing, you know? Um, and it's, it's acceptable, Right. But we prefer yeah. like the main thing that we want, right? And yeah. that's that's kind of like what the experience of it. Like you're 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 not paying for somebody's time and saying, hey, well, why is this? You know, why are you charging me 150 an hour, which is what I was charging at the end of when I stopped doing photography? Why are you mm-hmm. charging me 150 an hour versus you know Joe Joe Kokomo over here can do it for five bucks an hour? Well, exactly. You know, you contacted me because you liked my work. You contacted me because, well, I don't know what the pictures are going to look like. You see my work. 
Exactly. You know that my work is going to be like that for whatever it is that you're doing. Yep. I'm going to bring me with me to your thing. I'm not going to yeah, leave exactly. me at home. <laughs> you no, know? nah, you're you're right. And another thing is just a lot of a lot of artists in general just have to be comfortable with saying no. Oh yeah, yeah. No is your I friend. Mean, it's okay to say no. Like a lot of people felt like for some reason people just aren't comfortable saying no, and I guess it's because they don't want to let someone down. But you know, like I say, if you don't if you don't let them down, then you're ultimately going you're sacrificing yourself. So you, you end up letting your own self down. So well, I, I tell time, you something. You ever heard of love bombing? Love bombing? Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. Well, you, you probably know what it is. Um, you're talking about with art or whatever, where somebody is like, oh, man, I really love your stuff. I really, you know, it's so wonderful. Blah, blah, blah. They give you like a ton of compliments up mm-hmm. front. Um, it's like love bombing. They're like, oh, they're trying to, you know, they inflate your ego or something like that. And then. Mm-hmm. And then they try to get you to do it for like, you know, peanuts. And you're like, but you just told me that you love my work. Why are you know, why are you trying yeah. not, you know, why are you trying to get like a deal here? Oh, yeah. Exactly. If you don't have the money. Just tell me like, hey man, I, I don't, I don't have the money. You know, I I give an example. Um, we got to wrap it up for this hour, but I'll give an example. Um, uh, not necessarily of that, but like on the opposite end, like where this one artist over uh, evaluated themselves to a point where I was like, uh, they refused to talk on the phone. And I was like, you know, I was like, Hey, I just would like to do a consulting with you for a few minutes. And, you know, cause I don't feel like I can, I can type this out if you want, but I don't want to, you know, I'd rather just do a phone call where we could talk for five yeah. or 10 minutes. And this person's like, well, I don't like doing phone calls. I don't, I'd rather just email me and then I can get back. I'm like, you can't take the time to talk to a client that's willing to pay you. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's one of those things where you, you know, there's, there's no end all be all advice for anybody. I'm not even trying to give advice to people, but you know, you don't, people are not going to return. They're not going to go to a place where they don't feel appreciated. Right. Exactly. Or if they feel like they didn't get good service, they're they're not going to come back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, so like with your, you know, Savannah Underground thing, I know that you know you're focusing on the experience part of it, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is great because, you know, I know we got a little off topic talking about the business side of things, but you know that all that all is a big factor of whether or not you can keep doing the production or not, right? Exactly. It's it's a huge it's a huge factor, and it's not. I know it's not as pretty or as colorful as what people are coming for, but it's it's a necessity. And, you know, if it, if you don't have that person there, you know, making sure mm-hmm. everything is, you know, flowing right, then it's like you get too caught up into the art of it, which is okay. But, you know, somebody has to be there to manage it all. Well, I'm I'm all about the business side of it, too, Kiwan, because my undergrad's in business and I got an MBA. And one of the things right. as a business person who does art, I always encourage people, you know, hey, get your money. Mm-hmm. do You know, give them yes. best, you know, like give them world-class Give them a world class experience. You know, you don't 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 short somebody. Give them give yeah. them that extra. You know. Yep. But get your money. You know, yeah, get paid. That's going that's that's going to help you. That's going to help you expand. You know, if you're an artist, your ultimate goal should be you know becoming better. Yeah. And you can't you can't become better if you don't have the resources that you need to get better. Well, uh, and, you know, yeah. For example, if you like, let's just say you spend a couple hundred dollars on good quality oil paint. Right, because mm-hmm. good quality oil paint is very expensive compared to cheap quality oil mm-hmm. paint, right? And you, you know, you put all this time into painting a beautiful uh, painting, and you know, you don't, you know, you you go all out, right? And then yeah. you don't sell that painting for what money you have in it or your time mm-hmm. in it. I mean, like let's say it took you, let's say it took you eight hundred hours to paint this one painting, you know, yeah. which is not unheard of. Right. Uh, yeah. It's excessive, but it's not unheard of. If you don't value your time, nobody else is going to value your time. Exactly. So I could I could talk or, about business all day, man. Or, I love, it. Or with <laughs> I love that, it. Yeah, I know. Or even with that, you know, if you if you, uh, you know, discount your services and, and your efforts to create that project and you sell it to somebody for 
an undervalued price. Somebody else is going to come behind that person and want oh, that same exact price. Oh, let's go into that in the next hour, man, because I, I, I have got a whole thing about that, too. Oh, you, you hit on a good one, Kiwan. Hey, uh, real quick for the folks that are, because uh, this, this is, we got about a minute left for this hour. Um, where can people check out the Savannah Underground and get tickets? Yes, so the Savannah Underground, you can check out the information at www.thesavannahunderground.com. Um, that's where you can find out more information about um, the experience, the stories, um, frequently asked questions that people have about, uh, you know, just coming to experience the overall production. And um, also, if you have any other questions, you know, my information is all out there. I'm very open, very uh, willing to communicate with anyone who wants to learn more. You can follow me on Instagram at Kiwan Drayton, uh, also on Facebook. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to be back at the 4 o'clock hour, uh, Kiwan.